I said, the reality is this, is that with, um, he was an interim athletic director. Should have never had the power. Like, imagine, like right now, Miami would be a disarray if you fire Manny without an athletic director to properly place. Like, the, the, hot, the fire, actually, let me rephrase that. There's nothing wrong with the firing. The hiring should not have been made by a guy who's an interim. And what happens is, is like you should that that should have been the job of the 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 AD. And I think you know Mike will be and kind of put on put on place with the with the new AD that comes in, unless they hire one that's favorable. I hope they keep Alfred in the position that he's in right now. Um, I think he does mm-hmm. exponentially better for the university as the president of the Booster Club and influencing and helping bring an athletic director over. Um, his name escapes me, but he's currently at Alabama right now. He's an associate athletic director, but he has ties to Florida State. Yeah, Perrigan. Jeff Perrigan. Yeah, Jeff. Jeff was there when I was at Florida State. Mm-hmm. So I think Jeff would be a perfect, young, um, energetic, up-and-coming guy that's seen what it's like at a big program that can help us structure and get caught up to where we need to be at. I don't want an athletic director from New Mexico. Uh, or wherever the hell my, I want an athletic director from out of the SEC, or even if you want to give me somebody from the big schools in the Big Ten, I'll take that as well. But I need somebody who knows what, uh, mm-hmm. like, so when this football only facility is built, I need the layout and designs for the next one. That's what Georgia has. Georgia just got done building an indoor practice facility and stuff, and they already got the blueprints for the next one because the one we're building right now is already obsolete. And that's unfortunate, but that's just what happens when you get in the game so late. But what I'll say is this is like, you know, like that's why Mike shouldn't be. That's the other reason why I don't think Mike should be fired. This guy shouldn't have hired him in the first place. And this guy does not deserve to fire. Him. And the you 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 go in with a guy who has ties and a guy who can work hand in hand with those things. He shouldn't have been able to hire, like he has no experience. He was an accountant. And that's what he does very well. And that's what he should have stuck to. You bring in an athletic director who um, who is competent enough to be able to see three to four years down the road. Because guess what would happen? And this is like Mike is Mike had four. Is this is a six years a head coach, right? Well, seven. So, yeah, no, six. Yeah, six years a head coach. You know what happens this year if everything works out the way that it was looking like it was going to work out? Like we would have, we would have, we wouldn't have won any worse than three wins last year. We wouldn't have been any worse than five wins this year. And you know what we're doing right now? We're firing a coach. And you know we're, who are probably, who will have the ability to hire? Mike Norvell. But Mike Norvell would be two years better mm-hmm. as a coach. He would be two years more mature as a coach. He would have more ties. He would have more things going on. And I'm not even saying he would be that guy. But I'm just saying you would have – he wasn't going nowhere. He wasn't leaving Memphis. And I, I think I've said this on this show numerous times. No, I, and we've just seen now because again, I saw somebody put a comment up there. I believe Florida State's a big boy school. We just saw what big boy schools do. LSU didn't fire their coach in the middle of the season to go hire the most up and coming G five coach. USC doesn't fire their coach in the beginning of the season to hire the most up and coming G five coach. You fire your coach that early because you know you have the opportunity to go get somebody big. Or you just do what Florida just did. You fire your coach. You know it's coming. You fire, You give him his chance. You fire him at the end of the season. And then you go hire the up-and-coming G5 coach with ties. Mm-hmm. It's a way that you handle yourself when you feel you're of, like you're of the best. And it's a way you carry yourself when you feel that you're not. And that's no not, that ain't Mike's fault. That's our fault as admin, and that's our fault as fan. And my beef with um, with A.D. Comer is this. You didn't make a decision as a man or as an athletic director. You made a decision at the whim of your fan base, which is not what any athletic – which I think is the, was the fault of, um, of Strickland out of Florida. An athletic director's job is to make a business decision that he feels is what's best for the university. Uh-huh. It is not what's best for the boosters. It is not what you feel like the fans are doing because of because of now social media presence and all these other things are telling you. You don't get swayed by the reads. 
you make your decision and you're steadfast in it and you do everything that you can to support whoever's there. That means you don't cut the recruiting budget. That means you don't restrict the hires. That means if, as long as they're not like pedophiles or things like that, mm -hmm. that means you go out there and you allow your coaches to coach and you give them every resource available to be able to do their job to the best of their ability. And I will say this for the last, the, the gripe of the, of the, the last four coaches, including Bowden has been a lack of resources, a lack of support, and, an and not an opportunity to be able to go out there and perform, do what you need to do to the best of your ability. And that spans Bowden, who is just a phenomenal coach, who won in spite of. That spans Jimbo, who was a phenomenal coach, phenomenal recruiter, and probably won a championship in spite of. Tag, who probably wasn't prepared or ready for it, and neither is um, and neither was Mike, but I think Mike is going to grow into it. And we have no choice. And um, those are the things, again, if anybody wants to argue those things intelligently, please hit me up offline and we can talk about this on Twitter. But at the end of the day, if you really look at these things, that's the inadequacies of Coburn. But that's what happens when a president who's on his way out appoints his friend to be able to do accounting and try to in, in a in an era where you have to spin. Like you got to spin, spin, spin. And if nothing speaks that more, again, 15, like 10 years, 115, 10 years, 95, 10 years, 110. Like these guys are getting, and then next year is going to be stupid, even more dumb. So I hope Mike wins eight, nine games well, next year, and we got to pay him a whole bunch of money to extend it. I want the, I want the, the success to happen. But at the end of the day, the, the athletic director and the play on the field has been subpar because actually we already are paying Mike $9 million a year. Well, not Mike, but we're paying $9 million a year for a head football coach because Tiger's getting his cut mm -hmm. and Mike's getting his cut. So we know we have the ability to do it. It's just we're not getting the results that you would expect mm -hmm. to be able to get those things. So, and what yeah. is, what is, what is, um, what all is, in all? Sorry, I was going to say, one of the viewers wrote that was talking about the, the, the problems under the, the Tiger era. Yes, 100%. Is, is Norvell doing a better job of, of recruiting than what Willie Taggart did? Yes, I would agree with that 110%. Do I think Willie Taggart should have been the coach? Is he? No. I think he's doing a better job of recruiting. Let me ask you yes. this real quick. Go ahead. Hold on, hold on. What was the ranking when Taggart was fired? I would have to look it up here on the computer. We were top 10. And what if we? We only it? have the judge that. Right. And what so what I'm saying is, I'm, I I think Mike's doing a good job. A lot of the off the field stuff that we heard about that we should have never heard about, because, and that makes always makes me because there's things I hear about too, but you should not know about the locker room. That the locker room like that, that, that that's too much pillow talking. That right there is an was an indictment of Taggart in the first place and why he should have been fired because that won't happen under Mike because Mike will cut your ass out. Mm -hmm. And I know that for a fact. But the point is, is that the things that we were hearing and stuff that doesn't make sense. You can't call offense and defense in college. Like, stop. Like, not you, but I'm just saying people who wrote that, mm -hmm. God, stop it. It doesn't work like that. Like, it's too difficult. It's too, like, you can't be in the offense. Offense and defense meet at the same time. How does somebody go in both meeting rooms? Unless you teleport. Right. Some of the stuff that like, they talked about drug use. State of Florida, you can piss test somebody at any given time. And because we don't want to pay, what do you think would have been the first thing they would have done? They would have urine test them. Right. A lot of the stuff that we heard sounds really, really good on Real Housewives of Atlanta mm -hmm. or Beverly Hills Housewives. And that's the problem with our fan base, which is why we did not move like LSU moved. It's why we did not move like USC moved. We move with gossip, and everybody has to be able to tell the story. To quote um, a poet by the name of Dwayne Carter, Little Wayne is what they know. Real G's move in silence like lasagna. We are a big time program and fan base. I'm here to tell you guys. I want to. I'm shaking you. Stop acting like children and stop acting like like women watching soap operas. Start acting like the big dog we are. Have some standards, hold people accountable, and expect have the expectations. Some of you guys have have lower like if you your expectations can't be this low 
for for every aspect in your life. I pray it's not, because if it is, God bless. You're a janitor, and there's nothing wrong with being a janitor, but you're not the best janitor. Be the best that you can be. Expect the best. We got this. Our coach is going to be great. That does not make what, what Jason said not true. There are expectations. There are standards that were put out by our administration. It doesn't mean we want that guy back. God knows I don't want him back, mm -hmm. but it doesn't make it right either. So, like, I mean, those are the things that I think we can start admitting because we're all adults. Like, more so the fan base, not anybody. Like, you know, but that, the thing is, is that Mike's our guy. We got to support him, but he's got to – he's a big boy. He's getting paid, like, $4 million a year. He can take some heat. Trust me. 